Well, I know you guys are going to think I'm silly. Uh, I just came back from the other half's house and I brought some of my supplies over there so I could get a few things done, it being the holidays, and I forgot all of my tools. Um, I just walked out the door, left them there, I'm like, oh, I'll be good. Yeah, so I don't have hardly any tools. <laughs> so I had to... Um, dig through my stuff and make sure that everything I use today <laughs> I didn't have to really have tools for which is perfect because most of my stuff I usually keep pre-cut anyway so um to start off we are going to be doing this today although um now that I think about it I do not have this string so I'm probably gonna have to figure out how to, or I'm probably gonna have to put this on at a later date. Um, and then uh, show you guys how to do that, obviously. But I decided I was gonna show you guys how to do it on this journal and just pick a random cover and do it this first video from scratch. But I forgot I had this one. So I'm going to make this one as well into one of these. So, um, I will have two to showcase for you guys because they're going to be so very pretty. Okay, so we already gutted our book. And if you haven't got a book before or you'd like to know how, um, I will try to remember to link that video in the description box. And if you have got a book, then you are ahead of the game. Um, obviously I'm not going to do that in this video to save some time. So, that and I don't have any books to gut right now. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and, and trim off all this excess right here. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Well, look at that. This book is made of pressed board. And of course, be a little delicate when you're doing it because you obviously don't want to rip up any of the red and you don't want to rip out too much of this because then obviously you won't have a sturdy cover so just peel it back enough to where you can see this red piece right here and we're gonna do this on the same on the other side so let's go ahead and grab this and just peel up and see how it's not really pulling back too far if it's stuck in place that's fine go ahead and leave it but if you can get it go ahead and oh see we didn't want to that one went a little too deep oh. just got to be a little delicate okay oh I see this is a piece of fabric that was, I think, accidentally glued there. There we go. Yeah, see that? It might have been like a, a misprint where it was one of the book binding edges and it just accidentally wound up. Oh no, I see what it is. It's the fabric that goes behind the thing right here. So we have another one right here too. Um, oh yeah, that's right. This book is from like the early 1900s. So just be very careful when you're pulling it out. There we go. Alrighty. Now it looks like we are ready to rock and roll. And I really like this book too. It's It's got a fabric type base for the cover fabric. And it's not really degraded too much. It's in pretty good, uh, quite good condition, I should say. So my Ranger ink is at the other, uh, at, at the other half's house. So I'm gonna use this distressed oxide ink that Aunt Trudy gave me. We're just gonna go ahead, and I had these pre-cut, but obviously this one just ain't quite. It's not quite tall enough, so I'm gonna move it down 
and then we can use this to finish off the top just kind of patchwork it in there and that's okay and I have these rounds usually I have a little dabber but you don't have to have it and I am going to just darken up this this kind of it's not really a muslin it's a a mesh type of fabric that is very very see-through very very textured so that way it can hold on to glue and the surface that it is going to be sticking to oh, let's let's kind of cheat a little bit it is a thicker fabric so it shouldn't bleed through too much So, did everybody enjoy their 4th of July? I know I did. Um, this year we went a little outside the norm and we went to something in Tucson instead of going back to my hometown. So that was kind of nice. And then we just spent a lot of the day inside and I was working on some projects and spending some time with the other half. And we made dinner and then we went to we had a really good dinner too it was the first time in a while we've actually been able to uh make a full meal because we've both been pretty darn busy and so it was nice to be able to finally look how pretty that came out to finally sit down and do that and so after that we went to the fireworks and we came home I went to bed and then I got up in the morning and I uh, of course he had to run off to work but I got to stay home and, and work on some projects and visit with the doggos and now I'm here getting some more projects done um usually I would work today but I do not um so that was kind of nice to get a little bit of a break and this evening he's supposed to come over and help get a lots of businessy things done. He's been such a, a great help. So, um, you know, sometimes when you see a lot of action on Instagram, it's not just me. He helps out a lot with that too. And it is a big blessing. Um, I think I would go crazy if I didn't have help with some of that. Uh, cause I do a lot of the social media and all that myself, get on Instagram of course and, and put photos up so you guys can enjoy whatever projects I'm working on and all of that. And he's already said that he's, he's completely going insane <laughs> with, uh, Instagram. He's like, oh my goodness. And of course he's, he's a male and he's, he's more he's not one of them really i mean he seems like he is sometimes but he's definitely not the feminine type craftsy type so it's really funny to see him you know get all oh my god i'm tired of crafts <laughs> but in the same sense you know i i really do appreciate it because he's even though he doesn't really like it that much he's still such a big help <laughs> i've been told by a lot of people and i i definitely agree with them uh, he, he's definitely not getting let go. <laughs> My sweet neighbor lady's like, you better tie a rope around his ankle and keep a hold of him. I'm like, yes, I am. So, and it's just been a, such a wonderful blessing. So you will see photos from this one, obviously, up on Instagram today you know because I gotta let everybody know I got a new video out and you guys are always so amazing I definitely appreciate it um we gotta work a little bit harder coming up here soon and I'm sure you guys will see that because we just bought the tickets and it's my first time ever going we finally did purchase the tickets to Disneyland uh, it's just for one day and we're only going there for like a three you know I want to say technically it'll be a two-day trip 
um, two full days in California. So we're, we're going to drive up there, stay the night, go to Disney. Um, the next day we're just going to go have some fun and do some random stuff. And then we're going to come home. And for someone who's never been to Disney and never been to the beach, I am definitely excited. Uh, at first we didn't think we were going to get this trip because of some job opportunities that I put in for, which I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but now that, uh, those didn't quite pan out, we went in full bore and bought the tickets for Disney. So, um, of course... The bank account took a hit so now I gotta work my booty off and put that money back in the bank account and of course because of you guys you guys are such a blessing that is able to happen um, and I greatly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart uh, and I, I haven't been on a vacation in years so it's just it's gonna be really wonderful um, so here are these pretties. You guys got to watch me darken them up. I hope you stuck around for our little conversation. If not, that's okay too. Now what we are going to do is we are going to mount these. So let's jump right in there and do that. So now for the, the whole job opportunities, I put in for advancement with my current career. Well, I went and I took a test, and um, sadly, I did not pass that test. So, some big news. I will be going back to college, and I applied for financial aid, and I don't make very much. So, that financial aid is going to be very beneficial, and... I'm, I'm not going to 100% guarantee I'm going to get it because you know how that always ends up. <laughs> but uh, I will definitely be very thankful if I do get the financial aid um, because I do, I want to go back to school. I want to broaden my mind. I've been thinking about it for a long time, but financially, I'm sure a lot of you guys know where I'm coming from. So now it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Uh, I applied to a, um, obviously a small local college and, uh, got accepted. Uh, I should hear back on Monday on some other details and being able to take a placement test. And then we will go from there and I will let you guys know. So I will primarily be going back to college for my current career, which, um, a lot of you guys know I don't really talk about what I do and I will keep it that way but um, on a side note I do look forward to um, doing arts as a like a, a side deal and the other half he did the same type of schooling that I'm looking to go back for and he said that even for some of his side classes that um, he had to take arts courses too because I guess they were required or something to get a certificate or a, a diploma or whatever it is that I'm looking to get. So that was kind of a blessing. So I, I don't intend on taking painting classes, but I want to do digital arts and I'm sure a lot of you guys will like uh, have seen why um, some of my other social media stuff that you guys see me on. Uh, I, I love doing photography. So being able to dabble more and edit and play and maybe even um, start working in digital art. I think that would be really fun. As a, just, you know, something to do on the side for fun. Obviously, because I've said that like 60 jillion times. So... I'm really looking forward to it, not gonna lie. But in the same aspect, I'm like a little nervous because I'm 29 years old and I haven't been to school since high school. So it's definitely gonna be interesting. 
and I'm going to do my best to be working my patootie off doing the journals as well because if um, financial aid doesn't pan out all of your guys' help and support will be paying for college so I'm hoping that with enough work and effort I will be able to afford that and with as hard as I work and as much time as I put into such wonderful pieces and I really I really do enjoy it and I think that's why they come out so wonderful I'm pretty sure I can do it so and we shall see what happens fingers crossed all right now we're gonna obviously add some more glue and we're using Fabri-Tac I love this glue um, I really don't use too many other adhesives um, I think one of the other ones I use is the Arlene's spray adhesive that's about the only other one I really use uh, ooh, let's see thinking about it um, When I did a lot of scrapbooking, I used to use tacky glue, and I think it was actually Arlene's tacky glue. Uh, I I was 16, so I think I also used Elmer's photo glue, but I haven't used Elmer's glue in so long. It isn't funny. I think the last time I used Elmer's glue, I made slime. <laughs> so that was that was pretty fun, though. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah, so, all right. I hope you guys were able to follow along and able to get this completed. And we're obviously, we're gonna push it down into the cracks here. Make sure everything, it gets nice and adhered to these, the vintage original book. And the reason why we were doing that is because the uh, the mesh it's what's gonna hold everything together and make sure that it stays that way it's kind of reinforcing the book itself and bringing new life into it to hold it together and hopefully give it more extended years who knows maybe it'll last another hundred years on somebody's shelf packed full of goodies oh. and I don't have any scissors so that is probably going no there's no probably about it that is going to stay there all right let's get the cap on here I hope that was easy enough for you guys if not please drop some comments below I will um, try to uh, explain it a little bit better if you had any issues now we are going to set this to the side and as you see I just grabbed this piece of cardboard uh, it's recycled cardboard I can't even remember what this one came from I've been doing a lot of recycled cardboard projects lately I also have a pizza box cover here so uh, if you want to grab some good size cardboard and thankfully I keep I have two of these now so I keep one at home and I take one with me Oh, my lovely cutting board. If you do not have one of these, a ruler and a pencil will work to mark your area and then of course a basic pair of scissors. So I also, <laughs> I'm so terrible, left my ruler at the other half's house. So we're just gonna take this and lay it here and use this to measure. So obviously right there along the edge of the book is the end and it comes out to two and three quarters inches so we'll make a two and a half inch to make up for these two fabric spaces here and here so we'll do two and a half inches by I don't know why I forgot so two and a half inch wide spine 
by nine, no, no, eight, eight and three quarters. So two and a half by eight and three quarters. So we're gonna trim this off and make it look nice and even. And now we're gonna do two and a half. And we're gonna trim off the bottom. Now we're gonna do eight and three quarters. There we are. Perfect. And this is thick enough, we can save it for possibly another book. Now, we already know how tall this journal is gonna be, or this 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 I lap book is going to be. Now we need to know how wide. And it looks like it is. We'll go from where this lip here starts. And it's going to be five and a half. Exactly five and a half inches. But that's with it coming in a little bit too. Of course, even with five and a half inches, it can still, I feel like it'll be five, not a quarter, but just up two notches above a quarter. And I'm terrible with my fractions. So we're just gonna call it five and something notch quarter, just two notches before five and a half. So we are going, oh, there's some folds on that. So we're gonna go ahead and trim it this way. All right. So our book is eight and three quarters tall. Eight and three quarters. And I'm doing the eight and three quarters tall first because you'll have to cut less. Now, of course, we trim off this edge here. And we can do five and two notches just above it. And that one is done. And we do five. Two notches above, or I should say two notches below 5.5. .5. And now we have two perfectly sized plates. All right, let's lock this into place. We are gonna put that out of the way directly behind me. Those are our pieces. Our scraps. I'm just gonna toss these on the floor. I'll pick them up later. I know I'm terrible. I go through every once in a uh, I'll on projects like this. I'll just throw it on the floor and then I'll sweep up after. It's nice having tile. I never had tile until I bought my. Well, no, some of my apartments did, but not all throughout. I think, yeah, my bedrooms are the only place that don't have tiles, so that's really nice. All right, so let's just lay this in here. And flat, it fits in the two notches perfectly. So if you guys have watched my creating a curved spine tutorial, then you will know how to do this part here. So we're going to put it up against the edge of the desk, and we're going to push on the cardboard and just pull it down and if you cannot see it very well in this video i would uh, request that you head on over to the creating a curved spine tutorial and check that out please so 
This is very glassy and shiny. And I hope I didn't forget it. Oh, well, I know I did. But I hope I have another one. I usually do. So I will be right back. Okay, so it took me a sec. But I finally found them. Nail files work perfectly. I usually have some washable industrial ones that I bought from Sally Hansen's. Uh, they work amazingly. Um, you can also go down and use sandpaper. Um, these are 99 cent store files and they work just as good too. So go ahead, go in and buff off a lot of this sandy, this shininess to give you a really good surface to mount to. there we have it and usually if you shine it in the sun you can tell or you know a light or something you can tell how well you've sanded it and if you need to go in and make some minor touch-ups and usually the ones I find that really need done are along the edges and don't worry about um it going flat you can always Put it on the edge of the table and make it go round again. See, it look easy as pie. There we are. Now, I have been debating. Um, I don't know. I have some of that green of uh, this, this stuff. And I was, it could kind of be considered a Christmas themed, but the Cornhill, Cornhill magazine is obviously not uh, Christmas themed. But, I mean, it'll be red and green. Um, it is nice though, so I guess I could also do a white one. I think a white one would be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and set these out and sand them down too. I don't want to scratch the surface of my desk, so I'm just sanding them on top of the book just for personal preference. So I'm going to get to work on that. Okay, there's that one. Line it up. Oh, yes. Perfect matchup. What do you guys think? All right. We're going to do the same thing with this side. See how dirty that is? That's also part of the reason why I either like the washables or the cheap throwaways. Because obviously this one I can throw away. And the other one I can wash it and reuse it. All right, everybody, I hope that that wasn't too hard for you or you were able to join in on some of the fun. Now, let's get some string, which I should have probably grabbed while I was out looking for the, <laughs> the nail files, but that's okay. So I'm going to go grab that string and I will be right back with you. 
Okay, since I'm not going to have time to coffee stain it and prep for the video, I think we're just going to go ahead and play with our distressed oxide a little bit and see how it comes out. I want to start in the middle though and make sure I like it because you can always cover up the middle. Let's see here. Hmm. Let's see. What do you think of this? Ooh, I kind of like that. So what I'm, I kind of have an idea. So I'm going to put this over it like this. And I'm just going to pull it through. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's giving it a little bit of texture. Kind of making it look like it's been coffee dyed, but it really hasn't. Um, the other half is coming over after this video and we are actually going to be dyeing bunches of stuff. Bunches and bunches of stuffs. So, not like, you know, dying. <laughs> uh, we have a bunch of paper. I have the coffee. Before I came in here to film, I pre-staged a lot of the coffee stuff. So he could come in, sit down, you know, um, let me know he's here. I could close the office door and he can turn on some Hulu and, you know, watch one of those new shows that just came out that he's been interested in. And I usually wouldn't watch a show like that, but I know he likes it. So I added, to, added it to my watch list because my TV is finicky. It, uh doesn't like to switch back and forth between our two profiles and that way he can watch his show hopefully at least get started on it see if he likes it and enjoy it while he dyes some paper that's what I like to do so what I've been doing a lot lately is um watching bones lately actually and doing projects. I, I've only seen a few episodes and a lot of them were seen on TV. It's been a while so I forgot kind of what they were about. So I decided to go through and watch it from the beginning. Even the ones I've seen already. I'm, I'm just re-watching them all in order. That's like the type of person I am. He's so tired of bones right now. He's like, can you just watch something else? I'm like, okay, I'll pick something else. And then tomorrow I'll be back to watching bones again. <laughs> uh, so, dude, that actually came out really neat. I'm loving it. Love, love, love. So, it should dry and then it won't have that, that gunky feel. Uh, and it dries faster, obviously, than coffee dyeing. So what I didn't do on mine that I should have is I just take the ink and go in and dye the edge of your cardboard. There we are. That way, when you start layering your papers on top and you stain the edge of your papers, then they'll kind of blend together and you won't even notice that the cardboard is there. It's kind of reinforcing everything. Not that you really need cardboard on these cover pages, but I've really grown to like it, especially when you put these ties on it, um, because I've noticed that sometimes the ties, obviously with the paper, uh, they start to tear off the paper and fail. So I really don't want that. That's why I'm starting to incorporate cardboard with the ties. And it's all recycled. So a little bit of hopefully saving the planet along with making you guys some beautiful journals. 
there's one. And of course, you know, they're all sanded on one side, so they're ready to be stuck to that surface. So we've gone over, I will be going back to school. I didn't get that job opportunity. Um, I hope to be filming more in the near future. The house is getting a lot more organized business-wise. So that's been nice. That has been wonderful. So it has really helped me. Um, it's been super crazy around here. And the one thing that has definitely really helped is getting things organized. And I've always been like a real organized person. But starting something new, especially on a mass scale, and then, you know, not really having any way to organize it, because obviously it's something new, so um, you can't really just afford to go out and buy everything for it all at once. You have to start small. But it, it's definitely coming along. I'm pretty excited about that and of course I love making these wonderful tutorials uh, once I finally sit down and make them they are so much fun my problem is dragging my butt to the chair to sit down in front of the camera <laughs> it's not that I don't love filming for you guys it's just I don't know it's something about turning on the camera sometimes it can just be hard and I'm sure some of you that, that also film in, uh, for you guys, it's the same thing. I think for me, it's primarily because my film space is, well, kind of not work friendly for some projects, uh, more or less on the fact that, you know, having space for all of your tools that you're working with. So you gotta rearrange every time. That's how I am. I, I gotta rearrange every time I film. So that whatever I'm currently working on can fit in the area where I'm working. And when I work in my regular workspace, it's a lot more open. Um, I have like three different table surfaces in kind of like a horseshoe shape. So it really, really helps in that aspect of just having a lot more space to open up and, and work. Whereas here I feel um, a little bit more limited. And it, I, I kind of enjoy the fact that it um, oh, helps you open up artistically because you're a bit more limited. So you kind of got to work around it and that's fun. But I do, I do love having a lot of space to be able just to lay everything out. And in the future, I, I may actually work towards getting more space in my filming area and expanding and having more camera set up so I can work simultaneously through different work areas. I think that would be really, really fun and interesting. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my string or my, my story silk and I'm folding it in half right here and that is obviously going to go right in the center. So usually I'd get a pen and mark it out perfect. I think I'm just gonna eye it today. I'm just gonna put a nice dot right in the middle. I know it's it's kind of driving me a little crazy, but I know it's probably driving some of you insane. Oh, it's not exactly in the middle. No, that's, that's okay. It's okay. Not everything has to be 100% perfect. And that's how we keep from going insane sometimes. No, it drives me insane when it's not perfect. Well, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes things just shouldn't be perfect. It's the imperfections sometimes that make things beautiful. I think. I should write that down. <laughs> There we go. Where we find beauty and imperfection. Yeah. 
There we are. Oh, now we got some glue here falling. Stick that in my little, see, I keep a glue ball <laughs> over on the edge of the table. It's my thing. I was get it all off and rub it into a glue ball. And then I got, I have to go through. Now those I won't throw on the floor because I know if I do, I will never get them out of the saltile tile. <laughs> okay. Now the edges are dyed. The back is scuffed up. It's got a good curvature going on, but I think I want to lay these out flat first. Um, cause I know working with this is going to bend that spine out flat a little bit and I want it to keep its shape. So we're going to go ahead and put the glue down and I like to just smooth it out real nice. Give it some nice, good contact. No, it's not going to go anywhere. You're going nowhere. It's off of a movie. I just don't remember which one. Kudos if you can name it and throw it in the comments. I'll pin it to the top of the comment board. You're going nowhere. Alrighty. Oh. I like it. I really do. And even if I didn't have time to uh, go coffee stain this, this tie thing, I actually really do enjoy the, uh, the ink staining on it. I think even in different colors it would be really fun. It's a good thing I just bought some white, a bunch of white. I can sit and play with my different ink pads. I got a little container full of different colors. It'd be really fun to see what I could come up with and just play with them with the ink pads on this stuff if you guys want to see drop it in the comments let me know and I'll do a little video on how it comes out I think that would be really cute really fun um, I ordered a bunch of this stuff the other day because I love it and the lady I usually order it from, she had a sale on it. And so of course I had to I had to stock up because I love this stuff. Love, love, love it. I seen it, I fell in love, and I found a really um really great distributor. And I went ahead and got some. We got some leakage on the glue bottle. <laughs> Alrighty. I want to do this one last, so we're going to go ahead and just, just get that glue on our cardboard here. I like to glue the cardboard. That way I don't overshoot it on the book itself and have resi residual nasties kind of sticking out to where it can tack on to other things that you don't want it sticking to. And for those of you that have been following me for a while, you know my glue technique. I love this. It, it covers everything really good. It's, and uh, gives you just about the right amount of glue. Of course you go in. Sometimes I smooth it out. Sometimes I don't. Um, I try to always smooth out the edges or always make sure that the glue makes it right up to the edge this way it gets a really good seal and if it decides to bubble in the middle a little bit then it's not going to affect the edge of your project look at that nice and sticky it's like ah, i want your finger i want your finger gosh i have some energy today i blame you guys <laughs> I've been in a good mood today. Really, really bubbly, good mood. I'm sure the other half will be happy. And just fold your hand down like this and smooth it really nice into place. And this way you kind of cover up your glue finger and you don't get any excess glue on your project. Oh, that's the other half, guys. I'm gonna go let him in, let him know I'm still filming, but I'm almost done with you. And I will be back. Okay, guys, so we came. Yeah, I totally forgot that we had to go to the library. Because uh, I've been living in Tucson for a while now and still haven't gotten a library card. 
So we went down and got one. But back to work now. We are nearly finished, if you couldn't tell. Let's go ahead and get some glue on this pizza box, which is funny because now we both want pizza. <laughs> Uh, he's actually getting the grill ready. We're going to have some Costco hot dogs because we bought the package of them. We, I'm always bugging him all the time about going down to Costco and getting Costco hot dogs. So we went the other day and I finally just bought the hot dogs and the buns. So now we're going to make some. These sound so delicious. Ugh, you can tell I'm hungry. <laughs> But we are almost finished up here. And of course we're doing the, the same technique that I always like to use with the glue. Uh, I'm hoping to uh, be back to a little bit of a regular schedule. I mean, I, I do, I try my best to get a Friday video out, but sometimes I usually, I like to put out more videos during the week. I'll put up I try to put up at least three a week, but that doesn't mean it always happens, but I like to definitely keep Friday as a, as a standard all the time one. And I know, I'm sorry, sometimes every once in a while it doesn't happen because I, I do work a full-time job and a bunch of other stuff on top of doing this so I, I manage and I do my best and I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that do the same thing and uh, I'm sure you all know that sometimes it can be a little difficult but we <clears throat> excuse me I hate a cracker a little bit slide down my throat but uh, we all do our best sometimes and I'm sure you all know all right, remember, fold our gluey finger back. Just use our knuckles, kind of. Not really our knuckles, more of like this right here to smooth out our cardboard. There we are. And remember, this is more for these drawstrings than it is for reinforcing the cover. Now, this one is more for reinforcing the spine giving it that nice stability. So we've got that good curve going on. So we're gonna go ahead and cover this one in glue as well. Oh man, I am so hungry for a guac. Love them hot dogs. Of course, we should have had them yesterday because of 4th of July, <laughs> but that's okay. We're, we're getting our barbecuing done a little bit later in the week. <laughs> we, um, we went to Walmart yesterday and, and someone behind the Walmart was grilling it. Oh man, it smelled so good. So as soon as I get done in here, I'm gonna walk outside and oh man, he's cooking it on my little charcoal grill and it's gonna smell so yummy. So, there we go. Let's smooth it all out nicely. All right, now comes the fun part. So we're gonna make sure as best as we can that it's right in the middle. Just visually, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if it is a little off, which I can tell it is a little bit, you just use your fingers to adjust. All right, now let's push it into place. Get some of the extra glue off our fingers, obviously, because we don't want it sticking to our project. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and curve it like this. Get everything in order. Oh wow, look at that. Now I probably could have done the spine a little bit smaller, but I think it came out good. You know, cause you wanted that, that bend right there, but I didn't end up with it. And that's okay because I probably could have went with two and a half and I did okay, I did probably could have went with two and a quarter but that is perfectly fine so we're just gonna press this into place and there we have it 
Doesn't that look wonderful? So we have two journals here ready to be turned into lap books. Now you guys could decide which one would you like to see turned into a lap book? Um, even if I don't do the second one, because uh, I'm only going to do one, obviously. Um, but when I'm finished with both of them, you know, I'm, I'm going to throw some pictures up on Instagram. But if you guys would like a little short video on how it's going to look when it's done, um, let me know. And drop a comment below. Definitely let me know which one you guys want me to work on. Because if you don't let me know, I'm just I'm going to pick one. So uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys next week. Alrighty, I will talk to you guys later. Check the description box below for any other pertinent information. Um, if you guys want to get up to date photos on Instagram on what projects I'm working on or other do day ads and thingamabobs. Yes, Little Mermaid quote there. I that is my favorite movie. Um then please go check out Instagram because I'm on there so much more than I am on um, YouTube or any of my other profiles. And I just realized that uh, my audio <laughs> wasn't hooked in. I am so sorry. Um, but that that's okay because you should still be able to hear me. But uh, that is it. I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Oh my. It's going to be yummy. Look at that. Just a little teaser. We have a nice big storm coming too. Yeah.